Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the weekly landscape update video I do here in Raleigh, North Carolina, Zone 7B. If you've been following along with the channel for any time, you know how far this landscape has come. And this is kind of the first spring and summer where the, the shrubs have been in the ground for most things for about a year at this point, um, maybe up to about 18 months. And so once they're anchored in like this, they really start to explode uh, pretty quickly. So I'm just showing it off week by week uh, as interesting things are happening uh, out here. There are a lot, a lot of different pieces in this landscape. I put up a video a few days ago. You can, um, it's only about five and a half minutes long, but it shows a lot of the footage from what this looked like two years ago, if you want to go back and take a look at that. So let's get started walking around uh, and we'll take a look at this annual bed first. We've got Holly out there in the middle of the lawn on camera, as always. Uh, this annual bed, this little swoosh that runs across this uh, bed in the uh, front garden, is really, really filling in. Most of the things that are in this uh, grouping were done here at the house, the celosia and the, uh, the zinnias. Uh, I bought a couple of things. I bought the uh, coleus, this particular coleus. I do start coleus from seed as well, and it's not that hard uh, to do, but I, I, I wanted this uh, um, particular color. It's kind of an orangey red, and it kind of fit the theme of all the orangey uh, and uh, yellowish and yellow flowers that are in this uh, annual bed, but it's, it's coming along really fast if you've watched over the last couple of weeks. Um, um, it's really, you can, you can see nothing but ground maybe three weeks ago. Out by the street on the outside of my uh, little decorative fence, bee balm is uh, now um, basically in full, full flower, another week or so uh, it will be. We're not gonna see a lot of pollinators out here because I'm shooting this in the early morning um, by noon or a little after every day this place is just swarming uh, with uh, with pollinators as you can imagine and a white uh, cone flower that's over here next to it is a uh, i think another week or two away from that thing being in full color white is so undervalued uh, in the landscape in my humble opinion i think that uh you know i used to i s grew and sold plants for you know 20 plus years and uh you know, anytime I was selling plants, people would be like, I don't want white, I want a color. And uh, I really do, th so I really do think white is undervalued and uh, shows up almost better than anything in the landscape. Coming into the uh, gate, uh, well, first of all, uh, Agapanthus is thinking about flowering uh, right there. There's a, a flower bud on it, and most of my Agapanthus is up and maybe a week or two away from uh, blooming. Uh, here's, a, here's a bee visiting this Caryopteris. Uh, what's interesting about that is the Caryopteris is blooming um, almost months early. Uh, typically these are, these are gonna show color more like a, you know, a late summer, August, September. But this one, uh, this first choice Caryopteris has decided to throw out some flowers here. Uh, it was already flowering at the, uh, the end of May. I've shown the Empress of China dogwood in a couple of videos leading up to its uh, all these all these bracts forming uh, around these uh, flowers, and um, I think we're still another week and a half away from it being uh, being fully white. Uh, it still has this kind of a lime green uh, coloration to it, but you can see how many flowers this thing has on it. I'm going to have a hundred people ask me, "Where do you find one?" And the answer is, I don't know. This plant has been a struggle. Uh, for nurserymen uh, to grow. It is not hard in the ground. It's an actual, um, it's, it's not a hard, it's not a difficult landscape plant at all. But there are plants that are difficult to grow in a nursery setting that are pretty easy to grow in the ground. And then there's a lot of plants that are actually easy to grow in a nursery setting that are kind of a, you know, difficult, more difficult in the ground. This one just happens to be one that nurserymen have really struggled with um, to uh, produce. But my gosh, this thing is absolutely incredible. So I wish, you know, wish somebody, uh, you know, could figure out how to produce these in, in numbers. It's just such a beautiful plant. And there's, I mean, there must be, you know, I'm not exaggerating, you know, on one of these branches coming from the side, as many as a hundred plus, you know, hundred plus flowers, you know, on, on each individual branch. So Empress of China dogwood. This little spot of shrubs uh, that's closer to the house from the uh, annual swoosh uh, that, we, that we saw uh, this is Radiance abelia. There's three of them lined up behind me. Has a small variegated leaf, uh, kind of a creamy, uh, kind of a creamy variegation on this one. Creamy white variegation. I have Miss Lemon in the back garden. It's more of a, obviously they called it lemon because it's a yellower, a yellower variegation. And this one stays low with just, 
you know, one or two haircuts a season, one or two haircut, quick haircuts a season. Uh, you know, you see this is only, uh, I don't know, maybe that's 15 inches tall or so. I've got these uh, uh, Leanne Clayera behind them. I've shown them several times, but the, you know, that plant gets quite large. I'm going to keep them small uh, for years uh, back here behind them, but it's got a slightly larger, uh, a slightly larger leaf that has a bit of a sheen to it, a little bit of a shine to it. Uh, and then uh, there's a nightlight camiociferous back there, that little gold conifer. I'm really liking this combo more and more. Um, what I'm looking for when, you know, designing, uh, you know, designing spaces like this is, you know, leaf size and leaf shape. Um, and, you know, in, intermixing different leaf types. And even the blueberry that's next to it has a little, a really narrow, a really narrow leaf on it. So look for that when you're shopping for plants, you know, that you're looking for different uh, leaf shapes, you know, as well as leaf color. Don't just go in for the variegated versus the green or the purple versus the variegated or whatever. Also look for leaf shape uh, and you, um, you end up with more interesting combinations. On the opposite side of the gate uh, from the uh, Monarda, uh, right on the inside, I have a hydrangea paniculata called Moon Dance. And I really haven't shown this one off very much. I've talked about white wedding a lot, but this is actually another one of Buddy Lee's uh, introductions. You can see uh, the uh, flower buds coming on it. I, um, look, I'm gonna stand back and show you how compact uh, that plant actually is. And you, whatever hydrangea paniculata you have, panicle hydrangea, go out in your landscape and look at it and see if it looks anything like that. Uh, this one, I hadn't really thought much about. I had planted it and uh, I didn't know how great it was. I did see it flower last year, but we had a storm right when it flowered and, and a couple of the flowers got bent over and I just didn't think about it much after that. But uh, this thing is a perfect ornamental plant. And again, it'll, it'll be flowering here uh, over the next uh, month and a half. So you'll see it in flower, but I'm just super impressed with how nice of an ornamental plant it is with or without flowers. A couple of quick updates on hydrangeas. This is the uh, variegated mountain hydrangea, which is, this was only, this was put in the ground sometime last summer. So uh, this is its first uh, spring uh, coming out of the, you know, flushing out in the landscape. So it won't be the best it will ever look. Plus we had a pretty nasty freeze back there in a, uh, mid-March as some of these hydrangeas were trying to uh, wake up already uh, in my area, but it's doing okay. It's got, uh, it's got pretty good color considering, uh, you know, it's the first year in the ground. And of course that foliage is really, really uh, quite striking, that variegation. And then the uh, dwarf uh, oak leaf hydrangea is um, pretty much full on flower at this point. These uh, uh, over the course of the next few weeks will start to take on some color and you can, you can actually see that uh, if we get in here pretty close, you can start to see some pinks show up in these, uh, uh, in these, and so they'll get they'll get pinker and pinker, uh, almost a reddish tone over the next uh, month and a half or so. Heading back into the back garden space, there are a couple of hydrangea macrophyllas or big leaf hydrangeas that I've never shown. This one was actually planted here uh, when I moved in. This is one of the few plants that's been uh, left in place, and then there's a couple. Um, there's one that's pink here, likely will be blue next year uh, in the ground here in Raleigh, North Carolina with my uh, low pH and my available aluminum and another one uh, right there. These two uh, that I'm showing you now, the two smaller ones, uh, these are, you know, one of a kind that were just kind of, were given to me uh, by a plant breeder that uh, were throwaways. <laughs> you know, imagine what the, uh, imagine what the keepers look like if these are the throwaways. The sun comes up from across the street where we were and slowly but surely the sun comes down into the uh, back garden space here and runs me out of filming. So I come over to this side real quick to shoot this before I lose the light. Still picking lettuce out here uh, at the beginning of June. And so uh, uh, that's been nice. Uh, it'll get, it definitely gets better, uh, more better once, you know, once the temperatures uh, come up into the 90s like this. But tomatoes have almost reached the top of the, uh, some of them have almost reached the top of the cattle panels uh, at this point. And it's now definitely dahlia season. And so, again, I've explained this several times, but these singles that you're seeing, uh, like this one, uh, and uh, I'll go around here slowly to this uh, other one that's right next to it. Uh, that one's almost red. 
And this one's kind of interesting. It starts off almost red like that and then fades uh, to that pink. Those are the same, that's the same plant, which is kind of interesting. But these just have bees on them all day long. And all down here at the ground level, there's lots more that will join them, you know, that'll be four and five feet tall here over the next uh, month or so. And let's see, there's another one that's new this year. That flower's not quite perfect, but um, it'll make lots of them before the season's over. I showed this one off last week. This may be my favorite one so far this year. It's got a, you know, kind of a, it's yellow, but it has pink striping uh, in it. And uh, this is one that had come back from last year. There's a yellow right next to it that's come up in the middle of that one. And then, uh, let's see, a double purple. That one's a bit tattered, but there's a bud right next to it that's about to open. Here's one that's very red. You see that? I like that one a lot. Here's one that came back from last year, and I'm super excited that it came back from last year. I think I'm gonna do cuttings on this one. It has this, I'm gonna disturb this bee. Um, he'll be fine. Uh, it has almost a spidery, uh, he flew to, flew to the next flower, no big deal. Uh, almost that spidery uh, flower. It's, it's super interesting. Um, I think, like I say, I think I'll get cuttings on that one. That was a seedling that came up. Uh, again, no big deal that I disturbed the bee. Uh, here's another one that uh, came back up from, from last year as well. So just an interesting uh, combo of them. And then one that's uh, kind of a pale yellow, really like that one. It's kind of a, it's a semi-double and it's got those uh, narrow, those narrow petals, same as that other one I just showed you, but in a, you know, but there's like three layers. There's like three layers of them, but the center of the flower is still exposed, which, you know, gives the uh, easy access for the uh, pollinators. And uh, I, think I just saw another one I want to show off. This one right here has very small flowers and they've all been this small, uh, but lots of them. But every flower thus far on this one has been small. Again, this one was from seed that I collected uh, last year from out here and they, you just get recombined into, uh, into different, different flowers. Some of my summer flowering perennials are up and blooming, like you saw the Monarda or Bee Balm and cone flowers and uh, dahlias, which are you know, marginally hardy. Unless they come, if they come back one year, they'll come back every year for me here in zone seven. Those of you who in zones colder areas than that need to dig them up to keep them uh, through the winter. But the ones that, like I say, once they're, if you get them, if you get any established uh, here in my area, they'll come back uh, every year. Some of these are so interesting now that I think I'm going to take cuttings. Let me know down below this video, what is your favorite, the, the one summer flowering thing that you look forward to the most? Is it cone flowers? Is it black eyed Susans? Is it milkweed um, you know I've got some beautiful milkweed uh, in full flower over here for me it's definitely dahlias it's hand, hands down uh, dahlias and the, what you just saw right there is nothing um, compared to uh, what, what's actually going to happen over here I've got lots more varieties and a lot of the uh, you know named hybrids as well that you guys will see over the next few weeks and I'm looking at one over here by the lawn that's uh, opened up uh, last night so uh, I'll show you that one in just a second this little corner of the shop uh, needed some control this razzmatazz grape had just taken over, but I've limbed, I've limbed it up and I'm gonna get it trained across the top of the building. It already is going that direction and any limb that comes away from the building, I'm gonna prune back. I'm not gonna prune them right this second though because they've got lots of grapes on them. Uh, so, but I am, again, I'm practicing some control over this thing because it is a happy grapevine uh, can get after, your, <laughs> get after your landscape pretty hard. It was sitting on top of my rosemary here. It was drowning a uh, cryptomeria I've planted, which was one of the first things I had planted uh, back here behind it. But I think this corner um, of the building looks pretty good right now. I've got, you know, the red flowers from the rose and the gold foliage from the Elysium back there. Uh, the rosemary has that blue-green narrow foliage and the conifer back here has a little bit of a blue-green color as well. Uh, so I think this spot is looking pretty good. We were back there by the corner of the shop uh, coming over a little further away from it. This is where that uh, milkweed is uh, in full flower. All kinds of pollinators on the milkweed. It's interesting. You'll see, you know, you'll see all kinds of 
flies and you know just everything is drawn to that uh, thing when it has the open flowers from butterflies to bees to flies everything uh, it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of amazing and i said i'd come over here and show you this uh, uh one other dahlia that has opened up uh, that one's looking great i've got a stake uh, a few of these across the uh, across the back lawn there's a few more of them that are uh, that are coming up i have the one cloud i'm probably going to see this week uh here in early june uh, there's the deer dolores uh, hydrangea in uh, it's not full bloom there's there's still lots of buds that haven't opened on it but it's uh, showing pretty good color uh, at this point uh, behind uh, the container with the palm uh, with the atlas palm the uh, probably the most popular pollinator plant uh, in the uh, in the uh, landscape for for bees and for uh, um, especially the hummingbirds is the salvia and there's a lot there's a lot of salvias that have this similar uh, purple flower uh, with the black with the black calyx behind it uh, there's black and bloom and um, black and blue and you know all kinds of different names for a very similar growing uh, salvia uh, but if you can find this one this one is um, it, and it's not as going to be not going to be as cold hardy there are salvias that will grow in zone four and five and six this one's not one of them but uh, down here in zone seven eight nine ten those are definitely the best ones for for the uh, pollinators i'm going to show the annual border that was put in you can see um, get starting to get some pretty good starting to get some pretty good color uh, the salvia you know the salvia is blooming the gomfrina is blooming uh, this will be quite a bit more showy here over the next uh over the next few weeks i put this in and cut it hard uh, bees are on it all afternoon and then i did a perennial planting video where i planted perennials behind uh, this this annual border so you can see the cone flower back there that was planted in that video starting to bloom again a dahlias uh, starting to bloom uh, pink veronica that was put in back there starting to bloom and so on and so forth so annuals right here along the uh, turf edge that are all starting to show some color and then up a row of perennials behind them same thing they're all newly planted so it's going to take it's going to take a little while it's just kind of funny to watch these big old bumblebees on these tiny little salvia flowers i think you can see that uh, right there it's they basically weight them down uh, when they go on them but they're uh he's going to hit every single flower across this annual border holly's loving the mornings out here but these 95 degree afternoons at her advanced uh, age of 13 uh, and her uh, double uh, coat because she's part husky so she has this uh, crazy undercoat um, she needs to do some shedding in a hurry because she's not liking the afternoons at all but i let her i let her get lots of time out here in the morning when it's uh, cooler and we get a couple walks in the morning and then um, not not pushing her in the uh, not pushing her in the afternoons in the heat although she would go in a second she would be the first one at the door if i grabbed the uh, leash but i'm not doing that to the to her right now the swiss chard has just gone gone uh, ape over here it's maybe two and a half feet tall uh, at this point i've got it on both sides of the porch and the last couple things i'll show you over here the gold uh, st john's wort is uh, just on fire and if you go back and uh, i think it was sometime in the uh, late winter there i just ran the lawnmower over this well i, I cut it back um, in the video with a uh, with a pair of head shears and then uh came back over here with the mower later and just mowed it right to the ground and, and look how it's come back out it's so vivid and it's got this same as that dahlia i showed earlier it's got a little bit of an orangey color in the newest growth and then a, kind of a yellow behind that and then the oldest oldest leaves are have a slightly greener color so it really uh really stands out it will flower here in a couple weeks but uh, the flowers again they're yellow they don't show up all that well right in front of it some lobelia that i did from seed here at the house and it's finally it's getting a few flowers on it but it's grown like crazy out here i love using annual lobelia um, just really really easy uh, annual uh, to grow from seed the seed is teeny teeny tiny uh, so be careful with it um, i mentioned in the video where i planted these you want to seed these in a separate tray from everything else because the seed has a tendency to jump around into other things but uh, these will uh, be great for the pollinators and bloom all summer long there's still a ton of things i haven't shown off uh, in this landscape uh, during these uh, weekly tours uh, this spring and um, you know, I'll, I'll include more and more of them over the next few weeks and also 
you know, gonna have agapanthus, lots more of the summer flowering perennials. The summer flowering shrubs are coming if you count butterfly bushes as shrubs, which I do, woody, woody shrubs. Uh, they'll be blooming soon. And then um, the, uh, all, the, all the summer flowering hydrangeas, my paniculatas, you, we saw moon dance out front. I've got white wedding. I've got the tree formed hydrangea uh, back here that uh, I showed off recently. It's already budded up. So it's, uh, it's gonna be flowering pretty soon. So a uh, whole nother wave you know, of flowers uh, coming right now. Hydrangeas back here I haven't shown off yet. Uh, lots of things happening. So, and Joe Pie weed and, gold, and goldenrod and all kinds of crazy, you know, lots and lots of things to flower the rest of the summer. Thanks for watching.